If you're tired of constant diets and looking for a sustainable way to lose weight, then this video is for you. I'm a family doctor and I talk a lot about sustainable ways to live your healthiest life, how small choices can have massive impact, and ultimately how we can live our best lives possible through those small choices. When it comes to weight, this is something I've become somewhat of an expert in as I've seen people in all their phases of diets and weight loss, and I've come to realize what actually works and what absolutely does not work. On today's video, I'm going to give you five tips on how to eat healthier without counting your calories, but that does require consistency. I'll be sharing why protein is so important, just how much you need of it, how to avoid binging, and so much more. I'd like to keep in mind that this is general advice and it may not apply to you if you have a specific medical condition, if you have an eating disorder, or for some reason you have a dietary restriction. And in that case, I'd like you to speak with your medical doctor in order to see what works for you. So let's get right into it. Let me remind you, a lot of these tips are extremely basic, but that is the purpose. Not to overcomplexify weight loss, but to simplify it. Tip number one, what a balanced plate should look like. So here is an example of a balanced plate, which came right out of the Canada Food Guide. And the ideal plate, and this will not be every day or every meal, but is half a plate of fruits and veg, a quarter being protein and a quarter being your carbs. But what carbs are we aiming to eat? We're gonna aim for more complex carbs. What does that mean? Carbs that have higher fiber, like whole wheat, a lot of grains, vegetables, sweet potatoes, beans, legumes. For our protein, ideally we're looking for a lower fat protein. So not bacon and high fat beef, but we're looking for things more like poultry, turkey, eggs, fish, maybe non-meat options like tofu, lentils, even eggs. It's important to be very mindful of the protein we're trying to intake because I'll tell you a funny story. When I was a resident, I had a patient who had a particularly elevated cholesterol level and I was trying to investigate to understand why, like the highest I've ever seen. And when I asked her a little history about what her nutritional intake looked like, she was telling me that she ate every single day, get this, an ostrich egg. Yeah, I didn't know people ate that. But when I looked up ostrich egg nutrition value, I found that there are 5,000 milligrams of cholesterol and over four 45 grams of saturated fats, which is more than three times our daily needs. All to say, ostrich eggs are definitely not recommended when we're trying to choose a good protein source because there's so much fat in it. Be more mindful and be attentive to the nutrition value of whatever you're eating. Tip number two is to eat when you're hungry. Now I know this sounds intuitive, like obviously I'm eating when I'm hungry, but in today's day and age with there's so much information, like overload of information, especially in the nutrition world, we often take cookie cutter advice, apply it to ourselves, even when it doesn't necessarily work. There is some evidence on something called intermittent fasting. We could talk about fasting in general or specific intermittent fasting. There's good evidence actually that it works for people specifically with obesity or people who have diabetes or select other few. If you want to check out the article, it's here. However, this doesn't mean that it applies to everyone or that it's the best type of diet for everyone. What I've noticed with people who tend to skip meals, either intentionally or not, is that they tend to overcompensate later in the day or in the night. I'm sure you've been there where you accidentally or purposely missed a meal or two, came home or went to the restaurant finally when you had a second to eat and probably made the wrong choice, probably binged on something that wasn't the healthiest or even overate your meal. Now that's not the ideal way of providing energy to your body, which is what calorie intake is, simply providing energy to your body. So that's why I say fasting is definitely not for everyone and definitely not for most people. So when I say eat when you're hungry, you should be having a satiating, a filling meal every three hours or so, plus snacks as needed in order to feel fulfilled, in order to avoid things like binging. Now tip number three is prioritizing protein and complex carbs. I mentioned a bit earlier, what types of protein and carbs we should be considering and prioritizing. But something that you may not know is that protein is the most satiating macronutrient. What does that mean? Macronutrients are the three major nutrient groups or food groups that we need. They are carbs, protein, and fat. Now, when it comes to satiating, so what fills us for the longest period of time, protein does the job. So we need to try to try, again, that's the key word, implementing protein in almost every meal of our day or even our snacks. How much do we need? I generally advise people to take 20 to 30 grams in each of their meals something like that. Now, depending on where you are on your weight journey, what your needs are, what your goals are, meaning weight loss or muscle gain or other, the amount of protein you'll need will vary. The recommended daily intake is something like 0.8 grams per kilo, but many dietitians will argue that that's inadequate, especially for someone with goals like weight loss and muscle mass gain. So what do they recommend? Somewhere between 1.2 and 1.6 grams per kilo, depending on how active you are. For example, athletes definitely need on the higher range. I'm gonna give you a concrete example. Someone who weighs 50 kilos, if they're eating about 1.2 grams per kilo, will need 60 grams of protein a day. Ranging for the higher range, like I am because I exercise every day and my goal is increased muscle mass, then I'll go closer to the 1.6 range, which may look something like 80 grams a day. Tip number four, very simple, but very important, is cook more 
and eat with people you love. There is a lot of good evidence around this that when we choose to cook our own food, we tend to eat healthier. Of course, we're not eating out. There's not the unaccounted for sugars and salts and sauces that are added to the things we order. And while ordering in is fine, I do it probably once a week or so. Cooking more, prioritizing that will save you on the budget and definitely save your health. There are many proven ways that cooking for yourself provides a better chance at losing weight and having a healthier body. When it comes to eating with people, well, it's actually in the Canada Food Guide that eating with people makes us more mindful of the food we're eating. When we de enjoy the experience, like that's why I said people we love, not just strangers, but we enjoy the experience of eating our food. We aren't distracted necessarily by a screen or by our phone. We are less inclined to eat mindlessly and be more attentive to our hunger cues. Now, fifth and final tip and stick to the end because I've got some bonus tips that will actually help you prevent the overeating cycle. Tip number five, no screen. I know this is hard because a lot of people eat with their TV in front of them, eat with their phones in front of them, are watching a show, but I am here to tell you that when we are eating distracted, we tend to eat more mindlessly. We eat larger portions. We eat quickly. All of these micro changes, taking time to chew, actually taking a pause between our bites, taking time to drink our water, all of these actually help our body recognize the cues of when we're hungry and when we're full. But when we eat mindlessly, there's a delay of time between when we realize we're actually full. And by then it's often too late because we've just overeaten. So take a moment, especially if you've cooked it, to enjoy the food that you worked so hard to buy, to cook, and to finally enjoy. Now for my bonus tips, things that have been a game changer for me over the years and for a lot of my patients. Number one, eat your veggies first. I know it's simple, but if you actually fill yourself on the good stuff, on two, three, four portions of salad, you're getting the good stuff in first, that fiber, that nutrient dense food, and then work on the rest of the meal. But you'll have less room for maybe the less healthy stuff, the dessert down the line, if you start with the really good stuff. Again, these are all basic, but when you remember them and start to implicate all of them or some of them, you will see drastic changes. Drink more water, whatever you're drinking it's probably not enough I would add a couple glasses a day and no coffee should not be replacing your water the other thing I want to say is if you have an issue with portion control using smaller plates can actually help you but the other thing that can help you is to actually take the serving you want and to walk away not to eat directly from the dish that you cook the food in because then we end up eating more than the portion that we actually should be eating most of this stuff is actually taken from the Canada food guide and I'm gonna link it in the description below if you want more good advice and tips on healthy habits but the next thing I want to say is about limiting alcohol now the guideline change on this a lot recently. It used to be a very higher tolerance to what alcohol intake should be. And now the evidence actually shows that as little as one drink could do some harmful effects on your body. With this in mind, my advice to you is to be more mindful of your consumption. How much do you actually need? How much are you having because you depend on it? How do you feel after drinking alcohol? And most importantly, are you being safe about your alcohol consumption habits? Final tip that you may or may not know, but frozen food, frozen fruits and vegetables specifically contain just as much, if not more, Bye-bye.